getting traded from the Bills to the Houston Texans. And Stephon Diggs, who is about to enter his 10th season in the NFL. In exchange for a 2025 second round pick. I don't think it's a stretch to say that this is without a doubt the biggest trade of the offseason. It changes everything for two franchises. And in my opinion, it makes an up and coming team an absolute contender. And a team that was consistently a contender have a lot of questions to answer for themselves. But before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We're currently racing my basketball channel, The Flight Mike, to a million subscribers. We currently have a little lead on us. Now that we get all that out of the way, work! Look right over here, you'll see all of these wonderful human beings that have been able to make some money by playing prize picks. And I give away my picks for free each and every day on my Instagram at the Flight Mike and Snapchat at Flight Mike Snap. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat when you use my promo code Flight Mike when you sign up for prize picks. And thank you, prize picks. For the sponsor. Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Following the 2019 NFL season, the Buffalo Bills finally decided that the Project QB that they drafted, Josh Allen, wasn't a colossal draft bust after all. Thanks to some help from Brian Dable, Josh Allen started to fulfill his potential, throwing for 20 touchdowns and nine interceptions, leading the Buffalo Bills to a 10 and six record. His completion percentage definitely left something to be desired, but since there is a quarterback on a rookie scale contract, the Buffalo Bills had the luxury of trading for a top tier wide receiver in the NFL. And this is common practice in the NFL. Anytime you have a quarterback on a rookie scale contract who has shown even the tiniest bit of promise, you want to pair him with an elite wide receiver just to make him a little bit more comfortable offensively. Examples of this include when the Arizona Cardinals decided to trade for DeAndre Hopkins for Kyler Murray's second season, the Philadelphia Eagles trading for AJ Brown during the 2022 offseason. Miami Dolphins trading for Tyree Kill to make things easier on Tua, and even the trade that we're about to cover in this very video. Ultimately, the Minnesota Vikings traded Stephon Diggs and their seventh round pick to the Buffalo Bills for their first round pick, fifth round pick, and sixth round pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. Ironically, that first round pick would turn into Justin Jefferson, but this completely altered the careers of both Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs was a very solid wide receiver, but when he was with Minnesota, he he had two 1,000 yard receiving seasons. The moment he got traded to Buffalo, he had a 1,500 yard receiving season and had at least 1,000 yards receiving each and every season. The Buffalo Bills were contenders each and every season during the Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen era, but they had trouble making it to the promised land, although they came close multiple times. Even furthermore, this trade catapulted Josh Allen into the next tier of elite QBs. In the very beginning, people were questioning if Josh Allen was as good, if not better, than Patrick Mahomes. Every single year, Josh Allen had at least 4,000 yards passed, and in his first season, his completion percentage went all the way up to 69%. Now, of course, this didn't come without its own hiccups. During the 2022 playoffs, when the Buffalo Bills season got ended at the hands of the Cincinnati Bengals, this clip of Stephon Diggs yelling at Josh Allen went viral. A little frustration here, you know, Diggs wants to win, you know, he's a highly emotional player. And even as recently as last season, Stephon Diggs freaked out on the sideline after struggling against the Jacksonville Jaguars and destroyed a tablet. And through it all, I will admit Josh Allen handled Stephon Diggs's tantrums very well, and it's just a testament to Josh Allen's leadership, saying he's a competitor, he's a fiery competitor. I'm tired of hearing all of this nonsense from people. There's a lot of guys in the league that have the same fire that don't get talked about. He's a lot of our juice on the sideline, making sure the offense is staying up and energized as possible, and we feed off of that. Meanwhile, from Stefan Diggs' side of things, you didn't really get that type of energy consistently. There's all these questions about, was it Stefan Diggs that made Josh Allen the quarterback that he is? And Stefan Diggs wouldn't defend Josh Allen to the same extent, but at the same time, he was very respectful. Like when the Buffalo Bills lost to the lowly Denver Broncos and Stephon Diggs only had three receptions on five targets.
targets for 34 yards that night, which resulted in Ken Dorsey getting fired. Stephon Diggs' brother Trevon said, let's not forget, he didn't start going off until my brother got there. And Diggs' response was very professional. He said, I'm not responsible for how other people feel. Anybody in this room for that matter, a reporter, a player, even my own brother. I love my brother and the space my brother is coming from is my family. You want to know how he feels, you gotta take it up with him. Putting me in a position or me having a conversation with my brother, that's in-house family rules. But for me, I can't combat or answer all the questions as to why. That's something you're going to have to ask my brother. Now, here's the craziest part about this. Once again, Stefan Diggs was placed in a similar situation last night on Twitter in response to a video that RG3 made about whether or not Stefan Diggs is essential to Josh Allen's success. When I look at Josh Allen and I look at the relationship that he has with Stefan Diggs on the football field, it is clear that Stefan Diggs is the peanut butter to his jelly. He's the brown sugar to his oatmeal. And the only way that we're going to find out if Josh Allen doesn't need Stefan Diggs is if he leaves. I don't want to see that happen. And to be honest, I really didn't agree with RG3's take here. The Buffalo Bills championship window is briefly shut, and I'm going to get to why in just a sec. I'm not saying it's doom and gloom. It's more like you're paying off a debt that needs to be paid. But the important part about this is, in the comment section, one fan asked, does Josh benefit from having a top-tier wide receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. Stefan Diggs asked, are you sure? And then this morning, we found out that Stefan Diggs has a officially been traded. Yes, according to Adam Schefter, the Buffalo Bills are trading Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans for draft pick compensation, sources tell ESPN. And the compensation, I must admit, is absolutely insane. This is an incredible haul for a 30-year-old wide receiver. The Buffalo Bills received Minnesota's 2025 second round pick, which was acquired when the Houston Texans traded back with them. This is how the Minnesota Vikings have the 11th pick in the 20 third pick they sent one of their second round picks this year to the houston texans and the houston texans are trading that pick for stefan diggs the texans received stefan diggs a 2024 sixth round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick and a lot of buffalo bills fans are pissed off about this and i don't blame buffalo bills fans for being pissed off about this because when you look at your team's offseason in a nutshell it seems like you guys are just parting ways with a lot of good players that you used to have i mean you released Tredavious White, then you release Jordan Poyer, you release Mitch Morse and Saran Neal and Naheem Hines, which created about $25.96 million in salary cap space. And then on top of that, you trade Stephon Diggs, which by the way, incurs a $30 million dead cap hit on your team this season. These are moves of a team that's trying to get better and contend this year. These are moves of a team that sounds like they're trying to rebuild, but that's really not what they're doing. I think of it more as the Buffalo Bills are just paying off a debt. The Buffalo Bills were over the cap entering this offseason and they were doing everything that they possibly could so they could get more cap space for the future. And that's essentially what they're doing. They're just trying to clear up cap space so they could be competitive in the future. They went all in in the past bringing in players like Von Miller for instance. And eventually you need to pay off your debt especially as Josh Allen's cap number increases. In 2024 his cap number is going to be 30 million. The year after it's going to be 43 million. The year after that's going to be 63 million. So this is just a move that they're making in order to get underneath the cap. And so they could have flexibility for the future. But don't get me wrong. It's not really a move that excites Buffalo Bills fans. And I could understand that. At the end of the day, they didn't really have a choice. And you also have to compare this to other significant wide receiver trades. I mean, the LA Chargers traded their 30-year-old star wide receiver to the Chicago Bears and got a fourth round pick for him. The Cowboys traded Amari Cooper a couple of offseason seasons back and got a sixth round pick for him. So getting a second round pick for Stefan Diggs is incredible. From the Houston Texans perspective, I have never seen a team rebuild so quickly and it was all because of one brilliant trade that they made in the past. Trading Deshaun Watson for multiple first round picks on top of getting the second pick in last year's NFL draft and hitting on the drafting of CJ Stroud really set this team up. And I guess the lesson to learn from this move at least for franchises, and I'm surprised a lot more franchises haven't caught wind of this already, is you shouldn't pursue your quarterback until 
you have a plethora of assets available to build around him. Or the quarterback should be the final piece of the puzzle. I'm looking at you, Carolina Panthers, that rejected multiple first round picks for Brian Burns 15 months before trading him for pennies on the dollar. I'm looking at you, Carolina Panthers, that decided to gut out your entire roster to trade for the number one overall pick in last year's NFL draft and put your quarterback in the worst possible situation to succeed and then scapegoating your head coach for it. And that's no shade against the Carolina Panthers or Carolina Panthers fans. It's just if you want to succeed in the NFL, you need to manage your assets remarkably or you need to draft Patrick Mahomes. It's one or the other. In the case of the Houston Texans, what they did is brilliant. It's something that we've seen multiple times. You have a promising rookie quarterback that finished eighth in MVP voting this past year, one rookie of the year and became a pro bowler, completed 64% of his passes through for over 4,000 passing yards, 23 touchdowns and five interceptions. You already had two legitimate wide receiver ones on the roster in Nico Collins and Tank Dell. And now you pair that with Stephon Diggs. But that's not all the Houston Texans did this past off season. They legitimately built a strong team around CJ Stroud, both offensively and defensively. And the craziest part of all is they didn't need to gut out their roster to do it. For the Buffalo Bills, there is a huge question about who is going to be catching passes from Josh. Josh Allen this year. And there are multiple solutions to solve this problem, although I don't necessarily know which direction that they should take. On one hand, you could go ahead and trade for Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins, but what is T. Higgins and Brandon Ayuk worth at this point? If you think about it, you just traded Stefan Diggs, who is a 30 year old wide receiver who's had 1,000 yard receivers each and every season for your franchise for a second round pick. So, what is Brandon Ayuk worth? What is T. Higgins worth in this? This particular instance. Obviously, it'd be a dream scenario for Buffalo to acquire any of those players. But then once you acquire T. Higgins or Brandon Ayuk, there's the question of how much are you going to pay them? Then you're going to have to pay your brand new wide receiver one. And then there's the question of why even trade Stefan Diggs to begin with. Obviously, the clear cut dream scenario for the Buffalo Bills here is to reset the clock at the wide receiver position with a rookie wide receiver in this year's NFL draft. Problem is, is the Buffalo Bills aren't really in striking distance of any of the exciting wide receiver prospects in this year's NFL draft. But I don't think that matters. You don't need to select a wide receiver within the first 10 okay. picks for them to pan out. And we've seen that multiple times, even this past year's NFL draft. Jackson Smith and the Jigba and Zay Flowers and Jordan Addison all came in the late first round. Now, are the wide receivers this year as deep as in years past? I definitely think so. If you can figure out a way to get Brian Thomas Jr. on your roster or Adonai Mitchell or Lad McConkey in the first round, that's five years where you don't have to pay a wide receiver maximum money. And this has also been consistent with my championship philosophy in the past. You never want to have one of the highest paid wide receivers in the NFL on your roster. Unless if you have a rookie scale contract, you could get away with it. But historically, wide receivers that are being paid within the top five highest paid wide receivers in the NFL don't win Super Bowls. I can't even think of the last time a top five highest paid wide receiver in the NFL won a Super Bowl. And that's not to say that the Houston Texans aren't going to win a Super Bowl because in this case, Stephon Diggs isn't going to have a huge cap hit on them. But I could understand why the Buffalo Bills are doing what they're doing, especially considering their cap situation entering this offseason. So I'm projecting this year to be a very tough year for Buffalo Bills fans. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys made it to the playoffs. It wouldn't surprise me if you guys finished eight and nine. It wouldn't surprise me if you guys finished six and 11. It's pretty much an offseason where you guys had to pay up for all the risks you made in years past. And as a result, that's why Stephon Diggs was traded to the Houston Texans. All in all, I give the Buffalo Bills a B minus for this trade. You might be wondering why am I grading them so high? Well, it's because they got a second round pick for a receiver that's going to turn 31 years old this year. I give the Houston Texans an A plus for this trade. Obviously, CJ Stroud is placed in one of the greatest situations in the entire NFL and has a very exciting roster to compete with. I think the Texans crushed this offseason and I can't wait to see the Texans take the next step. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this move man aside from that i'm your boy mike i'm dropping our mic until our next upload